Could this be the best watch of 2021? Well, stick around and find out. For those of you who haven't heard of Furlan Mari, it's a new watch brand that came out early this year, 2021. Furlan Mari is a Swiss watch brand started by two people, Andrea Furlan, a Swiss industrial designer, and Hamad Al Mari, a watch collector and an artist from the Middle East. When it came to their marketing and PR in preparation for the Kickstarter launch, they went full blast. They were on a lot of watch publications in the time leading up to their launch. They also did a session on Clubhouse where the audience got to ask them pretty tough questions, which they honestly and earnestly addressed. And it was actually that Clubhouse session that cemented my decision to get one. I admired that they wanted to create beautiful, or as they say, highly attractive wristwatches at an entry-level price for the young watch enthusiast. This beautiful piece for $350? I'm in. So by the time the Kickstarter project launched, they were fully funded in three minutes, which is nuts. For me, I had my credit card ready and I was able to get it within the first 10 minutes. When the campaign ended in April, the project was 1,450% funded and they raised 1.1 million US dollars. I was initially going to buy two of these rose gold variants, but I chickened out and I only bought one, which I kind of regret because this rose gold variant was a Kickstarter exclusive and they won't be making it anymore. But in the end, I think it was for the best because I don't think it would have been a good idea for me to buy two of the same thing. So fast forward to September, the watch arrived. When I opened it, it did not disappoint. It's as gorgeous as I expected it to be. So before we get to the actual review, let's go over the specs first. It has a case diameter of 38 millimeters, lug to lug of 47 millimeters, case thickness of 11 millimeters, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. The case is made with a stainless steel, with this particular variant coming with rose gold plating. It's polished at the top while horizontally brushed along the sides. At the bottom here in between the lugs, there's an engraving about the model number, and I guess that number 109 is the serial number. The lacquer dial is glossy black, and the subdials are silver with circular ridges. The rose gold hour markers are applied. The leaf shaped hands are curved in a way that helps the hands catch the light in whichever angle the light is coming from. This makes the watch very legible even in low light conditions. There is a tachymeter scale along the outer part of the dial, which unfortunately for me, I have no idea how to use it. It has a double domed sapphire crystal with five layers of anti reflective coating, and the top part has anti fingerprint coating. When it comes to water resistance, it has a rating of 50 meters, which is good for a dress watch. The watch came with a quick release textured taupe Italian calf leather strap, which goes beautifully well with the watch. It also came with an extra black leather strap. Both the taupe and the black strap feel very good quality. It's powered by the Seiko VK64 Mecha Quartz Movement, which is a quartz movement with a mechanical chronograph. They only use two subdials, which are the 24-hour indicator on the right and the 60-minute counter on the left. For the review portion, let's first go over the pros. So much thought went into this watch from the design to the experience. You can definitely see it from the packaging, the accompanying papers, and the watch itself. It gives you a glimpse of the five-star treatment at an entry-level price. It's a beautiful, beautiful watch. I can't speak for the other colorways, but this rose gold one is just gorgeous. They got the rose gold tone perfectly in a shade which flatters most skin tones. The proportions of the watch and the subdials is just perfect. It's very much reminiscent of vintage chronograph watches from luxury brands. I know I'm not the most 
poetic person in describing things. I wish I was. So I hope by me showing it to you, you get it. The quality at this price point is amazing. Here are some shots from my digital microscope. You can see the clean finishing on the hour markers, hands, and how sharp the printing is. The other day on Instagram, I saw this post comparing the finishing of the Furlan Mari versus a Corona watch, a watch that is five times more expensive than this. It has details that I never knew I wanted. Details such as anti-fingerprint coating, the engraving between the lugs, the engraving on the pushers, the way the hands are curved so that it catches the light in all angles, the papers that look like Patek Philippe's extract from the archives, and even simply just the way you open the box. I like that they were very much upfront about where their watches were manufactured. They are indeed a Swiss company, but this watch was made in China. They're also upfront about using the Seiko VK64 movement, which is Japanese. I really appreciate it when brands are honest. Moving on next to the cons. The use of the Mecha Quartz movement is a turnoff for some people. When the project launched, I saw a lot of people commenting that they would pass on this and wait for a fully mechanical watch instead. Also, using this Mecha Quartz means that there is a ghost date position, which I know some people mind, but I don't actually mind it. The rose gold electroplating can fade over time, not sure how long it will last. However, at this price point, it would have been unfair to expect anything more. The new price point will be very tough to swallow. Knowing that you could have gotten it at 350 had you ordered it on Kickstarter, the new price of around 530 will feel like too much, especially since there are other brands with similar designs and specs for $300. Given how high in demand it is right now, we will definitely see some of the reselling and scalping BS, which will be beneficial for the ones who already own one, but very toxic for the rest of the watch community. This kind of culture really makes it tough for a young watch enthusiast to get into the brand. Overall, it's a beautiful, beautiful watch, and it really does deserve the hype. There's been some crazy prices on eBay and Chrono24, and I wrote my review before these popped up. I just wanted to clarify that I mean it deserves the hype at the original price. It absolutely does not deserve the overinflated prices you're seeing right now. This was my best purchasing decision in 2021. I'm looking forward to what Ferlin Mary has to offer next. If you have any thoughts or questions about this watch, let me know in the comment section. Bye for now!